And since I'm Hippias, <coughs> Socrates, Socrates, my friend, there's nothing at all difficult to define about the nature of wealth. For anyone who has wealth must have a great deal of gold, and sometimes <coughs> silver in some combination, for that together represents most clearly what wealth is. So that is wealth. Pardon? I'm sorry. That's materialistic wealth, yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, come on, you say something against what I'm saying. Come on, you're playing Socrates. Yes, that's true. I'm happy with this. Yes, so that's if I have true. a bunch of land, I'm not wealthy. Yes, is, that's true. That's um, uh, physical. Yes, that's true. If, if but that's what it is. If gold and silver make you wealthy, then if I had a lot of land or a lot of diamonds, I'm probably not wealthy. Okay, do it again, please. If I if I if I have if gold and silver are what make you wealthy, and I have a lot of land and a lot of diamonds, I must not be wealthy. That's true. That's that's how it goes in the book. Yeah, that's the way. See, what does that do? That now I have to expand. Excuse me, my friend Socrates. Of course you're right. I just made it short. But even though there are diamonds, they are exchangeable for gold, and therefore that's the very basis of the wealth of diamonds. <laughs> but diamonds are used for what purpose? Sir? But Hippias, um, can you use gold to purchase health? That's the only way you can do it with a physician. Diamonds that's are all they take is money. And gold therefore, and to be healthy, you need gold. Oh, yes. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but but diamonds are, have... are useful uh, in for one thing, right? Oh. And gold is useful for something else. So in, they're they're different from one another, and things which are different really can't do our function in the same way. So um, that's that's kind of what Socrates does with Hippias. Yeah. Okay. That's true. That's where it goes to the useful. But how do you get there from from the, the statements that have been so far made? All right, look here. No, not forget.
the value of wealth is only for one thing. Wealth always brings a benefit. And that is the goal and the purpose of wealth. Benefit. Like health. Health is a benefit. So are you saying health is wealth? Yes. Since it benefits, it must benefit. One of the ways things can benefit are health. Yeah, like are all wealthy people healthy then? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> You can buy healthy foods. Now come on, you, you can. Okay. Gym membership. Um, come on, deal with the ideas. Come on. <sighs> then, if health is wealth, then can health be exchanged? It might or might not. I don't need to worry about that so long as you're willing to say that it answers our question about the nature of wealth. That it benefits. Thank you. So do all things that ben is is do all things that benefit fall under are they all wealth? Yes, I'm glad you said that. Thank you. Uh, what? What? Oh, this one. Make sure she's finished. Oh well, then a nice. Um, souffle. A nice what? Souffle. Oh, oh. A nice souffle. <coughs> yeah, a nice uh, cool breeze. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, benefit you. That would be of course well. it does, especially for people that are hot. Yes, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> See, how do you know when you answer a question? So go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, when you... Well, what kind of benefit are you talking about? Well, the benefits that bring about a good. <laughs> Next, which is why wealth is so important. <coughs> well, justice brings about a good. So, would you say? So that's uh, that happens. Maybe, maybe that's true, but I'm not dealing with justice. <laughs> so, let's just stay on the subject. Yes. Uh, what would be the definition of a good to you? Oh, uh, if it brings about a benefit. And would you agree that wisdom brings about a benefit? Hippias? Well, certainly. Uh, you could Please. add that. A Thank lot you. of things, therefore, you can bring together and call them the result of wealth. Uh, wisdom is the result of wealth, Hippias? Well, can... that is a... No, no. See, health, now you're raising wisdom. And uh, Julie raised justice. Justice. Yeah, um, all of these can be considered benefits, and therefore they're good, mm -hmm. and therefore that's wealth. Wealth is health, wisdom, and justice because it benefits and makes people better. If wealth is wisdom what? and justice, what happened to your position that it was gold and silver, Hippias? Well, no one stole it. You've exchanged it. <laughs> See, I can joke mm. to block your response, and you have to find a way to get around my joking with a good question. Mm. Because that's, you have to, that's reasoning, right? Mm. Do we have to show the limits of your reasoning, basically? I don't know. I'm just saying it. Just, I'm yeah. trying to point out a couple of truths about mm -hmm. wealth. Okay. I'll take that as a yes. No. Yeah. Yeah, help out. Oh, I was laughing at what he said because he said he was talking to Pierre. Pardon? <laughs> All right, okay, I didn't I miss that. Come on, come on, come on. Well, 
Well, I think justice is. Uh, justice. So justice is a justice as well. Of course, I'm very glad you mentioned that. So is. Uh, so I I, uh, I don't know. I want to make a joke. But it won't work. Something about because then I'll joke too, and I, wanna, yeah. I get off the hook. <laughs> well, I want to say justice is priceless. So how much is it worth? Or to, how much wealth would you? I don't know. So, now look, that might be a way to go, but you don't know how to use it. Yeah, because okay. it's... Okay, just to okay. tell you, okay? Okay. That could uh, be a point, but you don't know how to use it. Well. Well, Hippias, if uh, we need to be clear about what something is, and apparently your wealth is exchange, it's useful, it's uh, function, it's uh, benefit, uh, it's now being called wisdom and justice. If it's all these things, don't we have to get a definition for each of those things? And how it is, of can we, course we can just you say, do. That's one of the values in talking. Wealth is a rock. We can, wait a minute. Yeah, yes, you can have a definition for each one of these things. I'm glad you mentioned that. But if wealth can be so interchanged what? with all of them, come on, come on. it's so not what? a clear wealth. Pardon me, I didn't hear that. It's not that. a clear wealth if you, you could just say it is all of these other things. How are we to understand your equation of wealth with each of these ideas? And then oh, we have to wonder... Oh, I'm glad you asked how to understand it. <laughs> so it goes back to me. Now it's up to me, right? Mm -hmm. Well, see, wealth is a term that is used in many ways in our country. Identified. And it's used often by the people who are most wealthy because they know instinctively that included in the very idea of the wealth has its own innate wisdom. And therefore, they have a right with their wealth to act justly in respect to, it is, to that which it is. And they're pretty sure that they're going to feel better as a result of that. And that brings about good health. Ah. Wow. Goodness, hippias. <laughs> oh, <bullshit>. And so... <laughs> All the wealthy men act with justice, hippias? See, I took what you said, right, didn't I? And I showed how you could continue the discussion. But while cutting a ridiculous figure in the process, if you're going to make wealthy men just, right? Please don't call my position ridiculous. <laughs> or it happens to be true. Otherwise, I would never have said it in such a noble group as you. They sound very virtuous. <laughs> and therefore, it's showing my virtue. Right? <laughs> yes. You must be loaded. <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your position on benefit in regards to wealth? Okay. Well, let me change your command. Our goal was to see whether or not we could substitute wealth for beauty. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Mm. Th these are kinds of answers that are also in the dialogue. So why is it they're effective in Socrates' response but not in yours? So, Though there were a couple of good points that were made, and I camouflaged them a bit. Because that's the art of rhetoric. Well, because we are learning Socrates' art, whereas he's already got it. Well, mm. well see, um, Rhetoric needs a manner, a style of using language.
to disguise what you don't know. Your goal is to try to pierce that. And we're using Hippias as a looker. Take a look at the way he uses useful. Come on, can you get into it? Let's get into it. Come on. How does he deal with it? Do you know what page it is, David? Uh, I, I, I didn't know. Come on. thinking of Eldar's dream. Isn't his job with his dad the same job? No, no, it's not. Like that's every Papalogos has a record. That's right. Every that's right, it does. And it can't it. exist without it. And our job is to try to pierce it. And therefore we always ask, what would you do to answer that pathologos? See, how can you use the mind to cut through rubber? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Who's got a good quote on useful? We don't. Okay. Sure. Oh, I got one. Go ahead, David. What page? It's on 389. I don't know. I underlined it, so it must be good. Page 389. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. 389? Um, right in the middle of the page, right in the middle of the paragraph. Let's see. 389, did you say? Yeah, Peach. Oh. Um, pretty well, all need to be called beautiful in the same way. Uh, excuse me, what's this, Stephanus? Um, 295 Delta. 295. 295. 295. Diaz and Dolph. Why don't you start from the top of that paragraph? Because it's just a big long list of stuff. So, if you don't want to, I uh, Okay. Then, too, in the same way we say that the whole body is beautiful, part of it for running, part of it for wrestling, again, all the animals... Page 389 here. Go ahead. Here, are, you, are you there? Yeah, he is. They wanted me to stop, start at the top of the paragraph. So here we go. Um, and, and again, all the animals, a beautiful horse or a cock or a quail, and all the utensils and land vehicles, and on the sea, freight ships, and ships of war, beautiful. and all instruments and music, and in the other arts, and if you like customs, and if you like customs and laws, also. Pretty well all these we call beautiful in the same way, looking at each of them, how it is formed by nature, how it is wrought, how it has been enacted. The useful, here it is, the useful we call beautiful, and beautiful in the way in which it is useful, for the purpose for which it is useful, and at the time when it is useful, and that which is in all aspects useless, we say is ugly. So one more time. The useful we call beautiful, and the beautiful, and beautiful in the way in which it is useful, for the purpose for which it is useful, and at the time when it is useful. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a right. beauty beautiful use. statement, right? Mm. Oh, okay, what did you do with it? Um, now, is right? it not this your opinion also, Hippias? It, it, it is. Well, um, so, then are we right in saying that the useful rather than everything else is beautiful? We are right, surely, Socrates. Now that which has the power to accomplish anything is useful for that which it has power. But that which is powerless is useless, is it not? Certainly. Oh, this is a good one. Power then is beautiful, and want of power is disgraceful or ugly. Decidedly. Now other things, Socrates, testify for us that this is so, but especially <coughs> political affairs. For in political affairs and in one's own state, to be powerful is the most beautiful of all things. But to be powerless is the most disgraceful of all. Okay, it, 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 that, that's where I would like to end because then it just gets into banter. There's yeah. a page and a half of banter here. Well, uh, he moved loop. from useful to powerful. Yeah, and there is a whole. And hippies liked it. <laughs> there is a great argument about powerful. Oh yeah, 
And, okay. um, and hey, that fits what Jews feel is a, is a, makes it powerful. But he has a nice conclusion to that argument. Yeah, keep going. On the next page. Well, here, I'll just go to here. Why don't we just keep going? Because yeah. it's such a Come on, okay. let's read. All right, it's a whole boring, this is banter. I'll read Let it. us decide okay. it's boring, go. Yeah. Okay, good. Then for heaven's sake, Hippias is wisdom also for this reason, the most beautiful of all things, and ignorance the most disgraceful of all things. Oh, look, God, that's a yawn. So okay. well, what do you suppose? Hold on for a moment, okay, yeah, look. Okay. He's using the same words. Yeah. Right, there we got it. Useful, wisdom, God. Okay. And, the, and as a consequence, since it is useful, it is powerful. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, what do you suppose, Socrates? Just keep quiet, my dear friend. Uh, I am so afraid uh, and wondering what in the world we are saying again. What are you afraid of again, Socrates, since now your discussion has gone ahead most beautifully? I wish that might be the case, but consider this point with me. Could a person do what he did? do what he did not know how and was utterly powerless to do? Uh, by no means, for how could he do what he was powerless to do? Then those who commit errors and accomplish then those who commit errors and accomplish and do bad things involuntarily, if they were powerless to do those things, would not do them. Uh, evidently not. But yet, it is by power that those are powerful that those are powerful who are powerful, for surely it's not by powerlessness. Certainly not. But all who do have power to do what they do. Yes. Many men do, men do many bad things. Many more. Many more bad things than good from childhood up and commit many errors involuntarily. That is true. Well then, this power and these useful things which are useful for accomplishing something bad Shall we say that they are beautiful? So far, far from it. Far from it, in my opinion, Socrates. And here's the conclusion. Then Hippias, powerful and useful are not, as it seems, our beautiful. Yeah, hold on. See, he's saying, look here, since you're focusing on that, I'm forced to argue for the value of that. He's saying, hey, you know what? The question, what is wealth? You now changed it. Now you're going to ask, what is useful? You gave up your question of wealth or beauty. Ah, see? This discussion changed. Mm -hmm. Changed the subject. Now he's on the idea of useful. Let's take a look at it. What is he saying? Where's the weakness in that? Well, the idea, the weakness is that um, for powerful, useful, uh, that's People right. commit errors and they accomplish and do bad things unwillingly. So um, if they didn't have the power to do those things, then they wouldn't commit those errors, they wouldn't accomplish and do those bad things. So it looks like being powerless is a good if it keeps you from committing errors and accomplishing and doing bad things. Well done. It's not useful, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Powerful to do, to do things. That's right. Yeah. Right. But since people do more bad things than good things, Sins. then it's uh, from youth up. Yeah. So okay. Now, how can you turn that into the next point? That's see, that's good. Then uh, the powerful and the useful are not, as it seems, our beautiful. They are Socrates if they are powerful and useful for good. So you have to take them back to the good rather than they do bad. No, no. Okay. Now there's an exception. What is the good? The benefit. But look at. Yeah. See, if you want to stay with the words, though, mm -hmm. you could you'd, you see you'd be required to say, what kinds of things are useful and powerful? Oh, they're powerful to do things. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, by the way, are not criminals acting in a very, as, in an interesting, powerful way to do things? Mm -hmm. And do they not find in their actions that they are useful in their reactions and in their actions with the power they have to secure mm -hmm. things that are not theirs? Yeah. 
oh, now we're removed from this language to injustice, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. I say, wait a minute, what are we talking about now? Uh, then we, we move from uh, what is well to what is useful to what in fact uh, uh, being useful Powerful to do things also includes necessarily being successfully in your unjust actions. Yeah. Therefore, does that then hold to the idea that it is a benefit and brings about a good? No. Ah, therefore? Uh, powerful gone. doesn't mean it's You go good. back, yeah, then you can go back to that. Yeah, and not only unjust actions, and I'm not saying that these aren't unjust, but errors. Mistakes, Errors, th yeah. things that hurt you. That's true. You could say that they're injustice, but that's right. you could also say, hey, that's not a benefit if it hurts you. That's right. And others. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so look here, back into it. Look. Um, hmm. Right, even a pirate can still argue that they benefit, right? Sure. Right. Hey, so you I want to bring them in. Gold, right? Right. How can you say I don't benefit? Yeah, but remember, but if it's an here. error, if you suffer because of it. Yeah. So either I have to give up that it's a benefit, or will bring about a good. Either I have to give it up, or end the argument. So I'll say. Well, that's uh, what you're just saying happens to be correct. That's uh, true, which is why it's very good to go back to our original position and say um, wealth is a benefit. It brings about a good. <laughs> then you have to remember that, wait a minute, we move from wealth to useful. So you, you can say to the gentleman who's reasoning this way, excuse me, uh, didn't we agree that we had to give up the idea of wealth being a good and substitute for it that which is useful and useful in an exchange and the exchange brings about a good? Oh yeah, then I can't do that. So you have to remind the person what was taking place earlier that cannot go back and pick it up when it's been rejected. Right? This is, this is essential. So look, um, he moves on uh, 295, right? Power then is beautiful, and want of power, ugly. So page 391. Yeah, yeah, right. 290, 295 on page oh. 291, correct? 391. Um, so now Hippias has to say, now for other things, Socrates, uh, testify for us what this is so, right? For us, that this is so, but especially political affairs. For in political affairs and in one's own state, to be powerful is the most beautiful all. And without power in the state, you are utterly uh, powerless and ugly in, in so far as the state is concerned. Okay. What did he do? Where is this? He changed the subject. That's the first big paragraph on page 391. Go ahead, do it. Decidedly now other things Socrates testify for us that this is so, but especially political affairs, for in political affairs and in one's own state, to be powerful is the most beautiful of all things, but to be powerless is the most ugly or disgraceful of all. Well, then surely it must be beneficial. And they're beneficial, therefore they're, they are a benefit. 
Okay? Come on, staying, staying with the same thing we developed. Oh, okay. Certainly. Now, That's on page 393, by the way, for anybody looking for it. Surely this is this is, this is a page that is central to the whole, uh, what I call, history of European thought. Mm. All right? This page coming up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's just read it. Got a couple of people, and I'll mm. point it out. All right. Let's do it. Would you play one? Sure. Go ahead. Julie, want to play the okay. other? I'll do Socrates. Uh, then let's see. There you, Socrates, and then that assertion that the powerful and useful are beautiful without qualification is gone. But was this Hippias what our soul wished to say? That the useful and the powerful. Wait, wait, wait. Page three ninety three. Mm -hmm. Right below the middle of the page. Oh. Then that assertion, right after Hippias says they are Socrates, they are powerful and useful for good. Mm -hmm. Then that assertion that the powerful and useful are beautiful without qualification is gone. But was this Hippias what our soul wished to say? That the useful and the powerful for doing something good is the beautiful? Yes, in my opinion. But surely this is beneficial, or is it not? Certainly. So by this argument, the beautiful persons and beautiful customs and all that we mentioned just now are beautiful because they are beneficial. Evidently. Then the beneficial seems to us to be the beautiful, Hippias. Yes, certainly, Socrates. See, change in subject. See, he had to change the subject from what is beauty or what is beautiful to this. Go ahead, watch it. But the beneficial is that which creates good. Okay, watch the word creates. Go ahead. Yes, yes it is. But that which creates is nothing else than the cause, am I right? It is so. Then the beautiful is the cause of the good. <laughs> yes it is. But surely, Hippias, the cause and that of which the cause is the cause are different. For the cause could not well be the cause of the cause. But look at it in this way. Was not the cause seen to be creating? Yes, certainly. By that which creates, then, only that is created which comes into being. But not that which creates. Is not that true? That is true. Okay. Hold that paragraph for later. Okay? That's yeah. central. Do you see how we developed that point? Come on. Want to go over it again, Pierre? Yeah, cause. Uh, but surely, Hippias, the cause and that of which the cause is the cause are different, for the cause cannot well be the cause of the cause. But look at it in this way. It, was it not will the not cause. be the cause of the cause. Right. Go ahead. Uh, but look at it. Was not the cause seen to be creating? Yes, certainly. By that which creates, then, only that is created which comes into being but not that which creates. Is not that true? That's true. The cause, then, is not the cause of the cause, but of that which comes into being through it. Certainly. If, then, the beautiful is the cause of good, the good would come into being through the beautiful. And this is why we are eager for wisdom and all the other beautiful things, because their offspring, the good, is worthy of eagerness. And from what we are finding, it looks as if the beautiful were a sort of father of the good. Certainly, for what you say is well said, Socrates. Okay. All right. Now, stay on this. Keep the idea of cause and effect, create and created. All right? Create, created. Which one is the cause? Which is the effect? Create is the cause, and created is the effect. That's right. Put that in here, and then you'll see what you need to see. Go ahead, try it. Then is this well said, too, that the father is not the son, and the son not father? To be sure, it's well said. I'll tell that to the Christian. And neither is the cause <laughs> that which comes into being, nor is that which comes into being the cause. True. Look here. The created 
comes into being. Not the cause. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Rash, reasonable. <laughs> See, all modern philosophy follows several thinkers, and David Hume says, um, <clears throat> um, you can hey, you can never ever understand a cause. What does he say? He said, "All you really have is regularity of your perceptions. All you have is patterns, and when you see these individual patterns emerge, you assume there's a cause. But you never see." He's saying, "But that's a myth. There is no." There aren't causes. Mm. All you're looking for is that you can anticipate from certain patterns. Mm. That's all there is. Socrates here is saying, look here. The created, which is the effect, that's what comes into being. See? The created comes into being. Cause never does. Therefore, cause must always be independent and separated from anything coming into being. Right, do it again. Right. The created, you can say, is a cause. Hey, you know what's created? Well, anything that comes into being. So all we see is things coming into being. But you know what? Uh, you never reach a cause because it's never experienced. And since it's never experienced, it doesn't exist. All you have is patterns. All you have is a sense that you like to anticipate based upon the patterns that you see, the next event. And you're going to call one the cause and the other effect but neither, in your, neither are in your experience. Plato is saying, look here, only the effect comes into existence, into being. What causes is, is not in the world of appearances. That's the difference between the classic view and modern view. And it hangs just on this paragraph. How does he use it? Come on, let's go back. Okay. That's the key. So that's the key to this whole section. Um, neither is the cause that which comes into being, nor is that which comes into being the cause. True. Mm -hmm. By Zeus, my good friend, then neither is the beautiful good, nor the good beautiful. Or does it seem to you possible after what has been said? No, by Zeus it does not appear so to me. The cause then is not the cause of the cause. Uh, where are you, Peter? But that which comes into being through it. Who's that? Prior. Certainly. But, hey, it's going through it. comes through it. Okay, how does he apply it? Next paragraph. If then the beautiful is the cause of good, the good would come into, we read this, but would come into being through the beautiful. Uh, and this is why we are eager for wisdom and all the other beautiful things, because their offspring, the good, is worthy of eagerness. And from what we are finding, it looks as if the beautiful were a sort of father of the good. That's a shame. Oh, certainly. 
For what you say is well said, Socrates. Then is this well said too, that the Father is not the Son, and the Son not Father? Yep, to be sure. And neither is the cause that which comes into being, nor is that which comes into being the cause. True. Agree? But, from what we've been saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By Zeus, my good friend, then neither is the beautiful good, nor the good beautiful. Or does it seem to you possible after what has been said? Um, Bang! They just got him. No, but Zeus, it does not okay. appear. Now he's going to take the negative side. He just got him, Pierre, right? Pardon? Hey, he just nailed him. Yes. It, the good is not beautiful. What are you talking about? That's right. You got it. The beautiful is not good. That ends it. And therefore, the next section is, let us take the negative side. Right. Mm. How did he do it? Right here. Mm. Right here. The created and the created. See, that's the kind of reasoning we don't usually do when we talk. But that's what he does. So he takes the issue and talks, hey, wait a minute. Hmm. How do you do it? Well, the, look, the beautiful and the good, wisdom and justice, they got to be in the same family, if not being the same things. That's right. And then he uses this father, son, cre creator, created argument to say, oh, you're pulling apart. Okay, you're saying the beautiful is the cause of the good. Right. And father can't be son and son can't be father. Right. So how could beautiful be good? Right. That's the end of that. Right. It's a gotcha argument. Is that good? That's a nice way of reasoning, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of... What, Julie? Pulling a fast one. I mean, it's assuming that the beautiful is the cause of the good. I mean, well, you, you go along with that. Well, you could do it the other way. The good yeah. is the cause well, of the, the good. Well, the good is the cause of beauty. Right. Right. So, look her, is look it her. attributing causation that's look her. the... Pulling the fast one? I mean, it's a con job, right? <laughs> Who's the con man? You, Socrates. It's going so quickly you agree without fully knowing what's really being said. That's right. Well, it's the cause of the beautiful, therefore the beautiful must be the effect. The effect? Yeah. What's brought, yeah. Uh, what is, why is that important? Well, that would be like the father and the son. That's true. They're not Go the ahead. same. Go ahead. And therefore, um, you'd say the good is not beautiful, and the beautiful is not good. Because the father is not the son, and the son's not the father. Pretty good. How do you like your reasoning? Well, it's sketchy. Okay. Because um, the good is not the beautiful. Uh, the father is not the son, but still the good is beautiful. Mm. And the father is the son to somebody. <laughs> but if there's a difference between what is created and, and right, the, the creator and the created. Yeah, clearly they're different. Then there's, it's, right. Yeah. So. Oh. Look, very interesting. It all hangs on this. So, Pierre, can we say that to, to argue for your position that this is a preparation for the dialectic? Yes. The dialectic should be able to solve problems like that. Yes. And Proclus, he's arguing that this is a way of testing someone who's interested in learning the dialectic. Oh. It precedes the four divisions that are primary and behind or what operates in the dialectic. Okay. Huh? Definition? Huh? Demonstration? Hmm. Division? Analysis? These are said to be the primary idea is driving the dialectic. And that's why people who are into the Parmenides, right, 
we should be able to take a look at these and see whether or not that's behind the way in which he is developing his arguments. By the way, the only place where you can see this uh, in detail is Proclus. Mm. But, uh, you, you mean the commentary? But it's a problem because he's not yeah. clear at all. Oh. He's mm. not clear. Mm. And it's either the translator, right? Right? It could be the translator, but it's a question. Um, I, th I think it's basically uh, a translator problem. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because the guy who's doing the translator admits in the introduction that he never would have gotten into Proclus. It's not his game, but he only did it to follow up and to continue his friendship with Morrow and decided upon his death that he would take over the task of finishing it. Mm -hmm. So whenever you get an empiricist to do any translating of Plato or a Platonist, good luck. They're not going to read it. They're not going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. That's all. Just They're not going to be able to see the distinctions. They're not going to appreciate the distinctions. They're not going to be able to communicate the distinctions that they don't see. Like, Suppose there are 600, at least, references to the one, uh, pardon me, to the self. And nowhere in the work is the idea of the self. So well, that's an oversight. <laughs> no, it's not. You can't see it. You can't see it. They don't see it. Well, they see it and they don't like it. Pardon? Well, they see it and they don't like it. No, I, I don't think that's true. Don't think they see it? Uh, yes, there are some places where that's true. But see, all of the ideas, whatever are called ideas, Plato is very careful to put this word in front of it. Yeah. Self good, self logos, uh, self justice. Why does he need this in front of it? And why do it, why do all the translators ignore that? Doesn't, doesn't that give it some existence? It gives it uh, like a, a being of its own? Is that what it does? Well, that, that may be one way of looking at it, certainly. Well, yeah. Would it make it personal? Uh, no. Say. No, his peer, you're saying, you're saying that uh, these people are not into knowing the self, right. and That's therefore right. they have no sympathy for uh, that word and its placement and understanding that, that refers to knowing yourself. Well, knowing the self, excuse me. You see, if you have the idea of the self, you can't be a Christian. That's all. Apart from that, it's easy. Say it again. That you, what was if you the, follow the logic of the self, you cannot be a Christian. Oh, okay. Why? Islamic, right? Jew, Hebrew. Because the ultimate term, if the ultimate term is self, you don't need to believe or have faith that you have a self, do you? No. Therefore, you don't need belief. It's redundant. No, apart from that, yeah. how would you describe self? Come on, what kind of... In terms of experience, uh, what would you well, what would count? What would account in any way if you have one of these things? Uh, what would you say about it? Luminous. Huh? Luminous. Okay. Wait a minute. Suppose I put 
self-luminous, which is what he does. You know, it's got a lot of characteristics of the divine, like it's omniscient and it's omnipresent and Beautiful. the self is like God. Beautiful. Okay, and so why yeah. stick it in front of a good word? Stick what in front of the So word? why stick it in front of Logos? Because it's fundamental. Is that an answer? Logos? Why is it? No. Tell her. If I tell her, she might get upset. <laughs> Self logos? It doesn't sound like No, no. It's you saw that. You didn't answer. Mm. Good. Self logos. So if, that word, if that word precedes all of the so called ideas, and no one puts it in that form, then they don't know what the idea of self is and why it's necessary for ideas. That's all. So you have to say, what is this thing I call the self? Huh? Uh, you got one? Well, could you describe it right now? Myself? Of course. <laughs> now, is it operating now? Yes. Okay, describe it. <laughs> well, it goes beyond words. What? Myself goes beyond words. Pardon me? It's beyond what? Words. Okay, so yeah, I take that. Now, why is that important to stick that in front of a, the word justice? Well, because you need all of these. Hmm? You need all of those words, all of these to go with the self. You're getting better. <laughs> no, 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 it's uh, important. Come on, Chuck. Is it because self is the cause of each of those? Okay, cause created, create created, yeah. Hmm. That might help. In what way? Mm -hmm. uh, it would distinguish, if you said self-logos or self-beauty, self-wisdom, any of these things, if you put self in front of it, 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 mm -hmm. it makes it clear that you're talking about the kind of logos or the kind of wisdom that's at the absolute highest coming out of uh, the first cause, the, or the self. Okay, we lost it. <laughs> but if it's pretty if, good up to that point. If it's the word that's being put before all of these other ideas, which are fine, lofty, and noble, and of the utmost importance to our life, then it's the central term in the whole system. Sure. To go back sure. to what Julie was hesitant about. Without it's a the doubt. foundation. It's the source. That's right. So now that I know that, or that, or that, getting into any of those other ideas okay, brings then you why the stick it in front of words such as justice and logos? Yeah, okay. It's in front. Because yeah. it's in front a, It's created from the self as a creator. So what? And then the logos and the justice and the good are the created. Yeah, okay. What does that mean? <laughs> well, just so you don't get confused and think that the good was the source of the self. This is saying the self is the source of the good. Yeah, okay, that's it. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, come on. I'll do it. What's the matter? <laughs> what's, what's the matter? Hey, what's the matter with that? Well, I would ask her what's the difference between logos and self logos? Like, what's the difference between? putting self in front of it. Then your answer didn't satisfy him. Right? Or he didn't understand it, or you... What are you going to do with it? you have an answer? He says, no, I, I didn't see it. 
My rule is just repeat it several times and raise your voice <laughs> each time, you know? And then when you finally finish shouting, you punch them out. You say, call them stupid. <laughs> Here's a little self-punch. <laughs> no, no, come on. Go back to your point. Um, well... Can you? Yeah, I mean, I can, but... Do you, are you satisfied with it? No, I'm not completely satisfied. Good. Then well, that's yeah. it. Because I don't know where self-logos stops and just hoi polloi logos begins or something... Okay, like that. notice she has an argument of why she thinks her answer is not correct, right? Because certain implications of it don't follow for you. Well, whether they do or not right. may not have anything to do with whether or not your statement is true. But I think actually I should have asked him how he's distinguishing logos from self-logos. Since he's the one who's finding, huh? But that was my question. That was, that was his. Yeah. That was his question. Yeah, that was his question. My question. That was his question. Because <laughs> I would say it's all self logos. What does that do for the cab cabbage and kings? Well, then there wouldn't be just the run of the mill logos. To worry about that he's... You're not dealing with the point. Come on. What well, has that got to do with the issue? He's See? asking what's the difference between logos and self-logos. And I would say it's all self-logos. See? She's saying it's, it's all self. Does that, does that answer why he would put it in front of this particular word? No, no, no. No, is it? All right. That's true. Fair enough, yeah. It's like what, uh, how does that word self change the meaning of logos? And justice and good. Now, what does it add? What does it add? That's right. That's correct. Like, look at we get it from Jeff. Watch. I give another shot at it. Is it is it possible that putting self in front of each of those recognizes that? I mean, it, it gives them being. It gives them agency, power, vitality, and existence, and it, it gives them consciousness, and it says they're real, and they have power, and they um, think and act and do in the same way that we would think of self doing those things. Ah, <laughs> hypothesis. Okay, what if each hypothesis is a state of mind? What if each hypothesis? And by mind, we mean um, a state uh, of awareness. Okay? What if each hypothesis in Parmenides is a state of mind? Right? And by mind we mean a state of awareness. Right? Now here's the problem. Moderns want to use the word consciousness, which is absurd.
Sometimes they use consciousness, right? Um, see, the reason that's absurd to use the modern term consciousness is that this expression means that this is, these are ultimate terms. and do not presuppose anything higher. Yeah. So, um, uh, Miss, uh, uh, what color is this? Green. Oh. But you say it's, it's, it's green or does it have greenness? Uh, I would say it has greenness. Oh. <laughs> it's open to perception oh. depending well, on the Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, uh, is there blackness here or is there black here? Um, I would say there's blackness because oh. there's also white. Oh, then ness means it's a quality of something. Oh, must the quality precede its manifestation? Well, yeah. Oh. Oh, is that right? If that reasoning is true, yeah. then for moderns to talk about these are ultimate terms is very foolish. Because it presupposes there must be something that is uh, the cause of that. Aware or conscious. Okay, so the right. quality of green, the ness means a quality of. Of something. Something. Primary, from which it derives its, its mode of existence. Uh -huh. Therefore, it cannot be an ultimate term. Therefore, it's a stupid psychological term. The only reason they use it is because they're afraid to use the word mind. That's all. <laughs> it's just a modern prejudice, that's all. Nothing new. But see, when you use the word mind, now you have to talk about what you mean by that. All right? Conditional. Now, is mind in this context... Conditional, being aware. Um, is mind a state? Yeah. That admits of degrees? Yeah. Admits of... If it admits of degrees, um, would you also say it admits of divisions? Yeah. If it admits of divisions, then good heavens, it may be that the hypothesis of Parmenides represents. Yeah. Go ahead. The divisions of the divisions and the lesser. Uh, must be a state that admits of degrees and divisions, right? Yeah. Degrees of mind. But wait a minute, that, is, that are hierarchically arranged, essential. Therefore, if they're hierarchical, it should be this way, right? Ah, now, if that's it, then th whatever you're going to do to explain this, you have to explain this first as the ultimate term. Mm. Now, traditionally, people use the idea of one, the one, or the good. But one designates anything that you want to talk about. One, 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 one. I'm nothing but ones. Well, therefore, it's a term that can be applied universally. Oh, good. Hey, everyone strives for a good, even though their goods may vary from person to person. It doesn't matter. They're all striving for what? 
good, right? So therefore they call these two terms ultimate. But they're, you see, they are direct, they are direct objects of our experience. So what happens when you take this and you say, wait a minute, I want to change it. Right? That's one self. That's going to be the highest term. Now, what did that do to one? See, the idea of the one was once considered ultimate. Now, now it's. Uh, now I'd say. Now it's like a. Um, it's a qualifier. Yeah. It's not ultimate anymore. So therefore, if you want to understand this, you want to understand first what this is. Because you're attributing that to this. Right. Which is why in the hypotheses he doesn't talk about the self, he talks about the one. Then each time he finishes the distinction on the one, he then attributes a point to the self. Then he continues it again and again and again. That's the rest of that's his passage, why isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well then look here. Whatever he's doing now, when I say one logos, the same argument. Hey, what do I mean by this? I'm attributing it to this. But that means it must mirror whatever this is. But hey, if that's a state of mind, it's not a thing. These are all states of mind. Oh! So we need something different. Well, wait a minute. Then wherever he sticks this idea of self in front of any word, right? Self logos. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the logos must be a what? State of mind. State of mind. Hey, justice, self, Mm -hmm. state of mind. mind. These are all states of mind. They're not ideas in the modern sense, right? They're not concepts, nor are they objects. They're states of mind. Therefore, they're similar to ox-herding pictures. Can we say that they're a state of being as well? No, oh, pardon me? Could we also say that they're a state of being? No. No? Why? Strictly speaking, the word being only applies here. And Therefore, mm-hmm. it's not going to be useful anywhere else. Oh, we can't use it all the way down. Is that what you're saying? No. No, IG of one goes all the way down, yeah. but not self. But not self. Okay. But we'll get to that. Okay. And not being. No, so, hey, mm. so going back, what's the value of putting self, self in front? It makes it into a? State of mind. State of mind. Therefore, all okay. of these ideas, justice and all these ideas, what are they? States of mind. So you should be able to go back into Plato, right, and take a look at it, and you can see that the definition of justice is, in fact, a state of mind. Right? Take a look, right? Book four. So beauty is a state of mind. And if you don't yeah. have that beauty in your state of mind, you will not be able to see beauty all around you. And it will have no effect on you, which should be love. Yes. Yeah. And wisdom. And then, <laughs> wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. So anyhow, kind but, of fun. But the significance of what what Aurelia is saying is that the idea of beauty is explored with self 
before it, right? It needs it. No. To invoke the state of mind. No, that's right. And that's what he calls it. Beauty itself, yeah, or self beautiful, as yeah. he said. <clears throat> but if, if the nine Parmenidean hypotheses can be seen as states of mind, not nine, but that's okay. Well, what are we going to say, eight? Well, okay. Well, please well, continue. Well, no, the, your question is pertinent to mine, so what do you, uh, stop me there, and um, why not nine? I thought you had said earlier, I thought we had started out well, saying, no, so, um, you can see the hypotheses. Okay. As, Ah. These, these uh, uh, are uh, shadows of this, okay? Uh, better than that. They, they exist not as negatives, Mm. Uh, um, these are designed in such a way that they only serve one purpose. Mm. Right? Look here. If you do not think there's such a thing as two, six is going to show you the necessity for <coughs> two. Uh-huh. and so on. <coughs> They're not just negative, see? As, as you look at six, you should be able to see if the six is true, then you need to assume the existence of two. Hey, same thing with seven. Hey, if you understand seven, you know now the need for three. Because of the, etc. Because of what results? So, the, the reason? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we're going to say the Parmenides is talking about what four states of mind? Maybe well, that's, five. Well, okay. Uh, um, these these can be, if you want to call them, they're negative states of mind. Yes. Uh, so, these are positive, these are negative, but they're also shadows of the other, they're uh, appearances of this. Uh, they are therefore not real, but they, but they are states of mind, that, therefore pathologos is not in here, it's in here or all fictions are here. Mm. And the effect they have on people is that they're negative states of mind. Oh. Okay, so uh, what, what I was going to ask um, is I was having a problem with what looked to me like a little bit of a contradiction. If we're going to call uh, some or all of these states of mind, whether positive or negative. What one? Whether positive or negative, we're going to yeah. call them states of mind. Yeah, okay. Um, and, but self does not go all the way down. No. And yet, thirdly, putting self before any one of these things turns it into a state of mind. Um, then there seems to be a problem. Because... That's a good one. He's got Shapir, right? Well, if they're see, not applied to 6, 7, 8, 9, we're saying there's states the of The question you're asking is this one. All right? Um,
What is an idea? And our ideas in the pure sense, are they throughout? So five as an example, all right? Five is a pure dualism. That means there is no interaction whatsoever between these two. This is the realm of the intelligible. This is in the realm of ideas. Therefore, for five, they, they, where they are where they are, but they never penetrate in the world of appearances. I'm not sure how what you're. I'm not sure I follow what you're saying. I mean, I get the basic idea of it, but I'm not sure how that's an answer to the question that I asked. Well, um, what do you, um, I think you were asking the question: Why is it? Why is it? Why can it be said that the idea of the self does not continue throughout all of them? And you pointed the fact that if these are all states of mind, should they not all have the preface? Self. Self. That's essentially your question, isn't it? Yeah. In order for us to be consistent, yes. So, because well, if, yes. Okay. Um, so because yeah. otherwise putting self before anything will not turn it into a state of mind. So, um, when a person, when a person is in the fourth, all right. They are not aware that there are these other realms within their own world, but they're ignorant of them. Yep. Equally well, they have no idea that they can be worse off if they give up whatever it is to be a four to get into five. So each one of these, you can say, uh, becomes populated with being, beings who then perceive and suffer. Right. This is where suffering begins. or experience, not up here. Mm -hmm. So, um, see, what status do you give for ignorance? Now, there are many different kinds of ignorance, mm -hmm. right? The sophist doesn't know that he doesn't know and he wants to appear as an hour before other people. No. And that's his primary goal. He doesn't realize he's really ignorant. So what's the stat what kind of what kind of status does ignorance have? Is it a thing? It's a condition, is it not? Condition. Yeah. Um. Thomas Taylor calls it an empire. <laughs> okay, I like that. <laughs> so, um, um, you can be king in your own kingdom. Nice. Dominance. What I do not know, I do not think I do. Now, is that an admission of ignorance? Yes. No, it's, it's the opposite. It's like, um, what I do not know, I do not think I do. It's, it's 
not an admission of ignorance. Well, what kind of a statement, therefore, what kind of claim is he making? He's open. What? He's open. He's, um... See, that's true, but that doesn't answer the question. Yeah. It's a statement of knowing. Of course it is, but that's not telling you what the statement means. In, in terms of... Uh, the full statement itself, you see. You're saying, I know that I don't think I know what I don't know. That's not what it says. What I do not know, I do not think I do. Right. That means what he knows, he would never mistake it for anything else. Yeah, how do you, how do you get... Wait, wait a minute, is that right? No. A person who can make that statement would be someone who can say, my kind of knowing is of such a nature, I can never mistake it for anything else. Therefore, I can say what I do not know, I, I don't think I do. How do you get there? How do you, <laughs> make, how do you make that, that jump? That looks like an inference from that sentence. I've heard you say it before, and I'm just wondering how you reason your way to to get that out of that statement. See, here are things, here are things These are three things I don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. By the way, I would never mistake any of these for what I do know. I do not know. Yeah, I they are. think that I do know those things. And so you're changing. Well, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to what you're saying, but. Would you agree? Would you agree? We just made a list of things that match that description. Yes. Yes. Right, right, right. By the way. Uh, what follows? Would he ever think that he knows these things that he doesn't know? No. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Then he would never mistake what he knows for these things. So that seems like a jump. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not no. agree. I'm not arguing against it. I'm I just don't trying mind. to see I don't. how you get there. I don't mind. Okay. Um, So, if, you, if he doesn't think he knows those things... What does a sophist do with this? What I do not know, I think I do. Agree? Yeah, he's... He, he prete he's mm -hmm. It's like he knows everything. He, he, he pretends like he knows everything. So, what's the value of this now? Well, he's not a sophist. That, that's clear. He's definitely not a sophist. So, mm -hmm. he doesn't play that game of pretending to know what he doesn't know. Well, you're, so say, you're saying that that means that he knows something. Mm -hmm. I, I think, can I try to help you a little bit? So, looks like there's three things, and it seems that you're saying one of them's not there. Right, so first of all, there's a category of things I do not know. Wait, I'm not saying that. Please, could, just let me set it out real quick, okay? Do you mean th those three, three things? Do you mean those three? If you'll give me a chance to speak, I'll express them. No, not those three that he's got circled. That's true. First of all, there's things that I don't know. There's things that I think that I do know. And there's things that I actually know. And you're wondering, uh, why are you bringing in that third thing, things that I do know, into this statement when it appears that there's only the two? Right, yeah, that's right. So why are you doing that, Pierre? Why are you making a claim that the person who holds this statement actually knows things? Um, <laughs> that's what I said. I well, don't think he um, said that. See, it's worse than that. Um, um, so, now this is where you need a good uh, make sure the translation is correct but let's, let's do it better um, 
Would you agree this of this word admits in English of degrees? I, I don't know what that what do you mean. Well, when someone says I think I do, is that the same thing as I know I do? No. no. Right, it admits of an ambiguity. Therefore, there's an ambiguity in this by the use of that word. Therefore, it's important to know what the real word in the Greek is before you may go any further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, given the fact that um, um, what I do not know I am not foolish enough to think that I do know it. That's the force of this. Mm -hmm. And that does presuppose that there's some kind of knowing going on that is not included in that statement. You're quite right. I'm not against that. Yeah, I like yeah. it. What, what I know, I don't confuse with anything else I don't know. And that does presuppose there's a kind of knowing independent of those two statements that makes this real. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to what That's you true. were saying. Yeah. <clears throat> and of that kind of knowing, it never mistake for anything else. How, how, what does that do? <laughs> I, I like it, but I, it, it's not, I don't know, it's... it's uh... Okay. Put it in, in uh, Platonic terms, right? People who claim in a Platonic term that they know, the object of what they know is true being. Another word for true being is intelligible. Another word for it is the brilliant light of being. That's the experience. This is the metaphysical statement for the brilliant light of being. So, if he's had that experience of the brilliant light of being, he'd never mistake it for anything else. Therefore, you can say, what I do not know, I don't think I do. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Is it, I, so, wait, is it is it possible to to go is it possible to go further with this and say that the only thing you can truly know is true being? Pardon? Is it possible to go is he saying I mean can we go further and say that if you really want to ask what it is to know something now, yes. knowing itself. Is he saying that the only thing that can really truly be known is true being? Yes. Whoa. So I would never, that's why I would he never says, mistake anything no, else for that. That's why he says that the self is beyond knowing. First hypothesis. Because when you're talking true being, you're in the second hypothesis, not that's the first. Right. That's right. And the self's in the first. No. Um, so he's not trying to claim that he knows the self in the sense of the first hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And that really says a lot about knowing. No. That's how you can get from all the negatives that, that we were struggling with a second ago to the positive. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you yeah. reconcile that with the idea of the sciences? Pardon? If there's only one kind of knowledge yeah. of true I'm being, sure. how come in the symposium he speaks of a multitude of knowledges? Right, in the great ocean of beauty part, he says. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then he'll wake up to the, the source of that. Right, so, but those are plural. So well, there's, that's, that's more than one knowledge. No, 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 no. no. There, are there are different experiences leading up to true beauty. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, he doesn't call beauty, he calls reality and truth. Mm -hmm. So that. That's the plurality of knowledge, those different experiences? Well, well, uh, yeah. well the pluralities always... of ideas of knowledge, they are, not, they are not qualities of true knowledge. Okay. 
I always assumed that those knowledges or sciences were the arts in the, okay. in, in the seventh book. Okay, if you want. Uh, like arithmetic, geometry. Yeah, they have no benefit. Therefore, no, they're not objects of, of uh, an art. No benefit. Hmm? They have no benefit. They have no benefit. Why is that? Oh, do you mean in their mundane way? Well, it depends upon what one does with it. By themselves, they have no benefit. Okay. So... By the way, we got a little bit off. I thought we were going... We can do it later. But we were going into the idea of different kinds of ignorance, which is why we were doing this. Yeah. And... Uh, Right, you brought up that quote about knowledge so, and all this. Stuff. Like in the, in the symposium, right? That plays a major role. Ignorance. Yeah. Idea of ignorance. Uh, so, uh, see, these are, the reason we were bringing it up, these are different kinds of ignorance. Mm hmm These are kinds of uh, degrees of knowing, but not true knowing. Okay. Fun. Okay. Fun. Fun. Let's hear it for Great. Okay. That's easy to get into.